So today we're going to be looking inside an FM transmitter. This is a broadcast warehouse TX5, which is a 5 watt FM transmitter. So let's open it up. Okay, so we're having a look inside the FM transmitter. Starting from left to right, you can see on the left is the power supply. In the center is the amplifier, that's the RF amplifier. Then on the far right is the main board, which is the main transmitter board, or you could call it the motherboard, which has the uh, frequency generation to uh, create the FM signal. It also has the audio processing and some other control elements there as well. On the front panel, we have the control circuit, which controls everything about the transmitter, the power, the frequency, uh, all that sort of thing. And also gives you a lot of feedback of what's happening as far as modulation. So let's look a bit closer at each component. The first one, the power supply, you might think is the least interesting, but is actually very, very important. You can see this power supply is very high quality. And um, the important thing about this type of power supply is that it removes all the noise. And the, there's nothing worse than having a transmitter that could have great sound, but it's got a buzz or a, a really horrible sound behind it coming from the power supply. So this shielded, High quality power supply gives you a nice, clean, quiet signal. Because the last thing you want is a radio station that sounds like this. So let's move to the right hand side here. You can see the exciter board. And this exciter board or transmitter board or main board, which are whatever you want to call it, has most of the transmitter built into it. it in fact, it could run almost independently. Uh, the fact that it can generate the radio signal, it can process the audio and um, send the signal out. Starting with where the radio signal is actually generated, if you look right here, you can see a couple of dials that you can set to preset the frequency on the transmitter. Now you can set the frequency on the front panel, which we'll get to in a minute, but uh, having it inbuilt on the board means that you can lock it in without having the danger of people tampering with the frequency uh, or any other settings. You can basically have it where if your transmitter is in the studio where people are broadcasting, you could have some person who is a bit malicious could come along and change the frequency of your transmitter on the front panel. But if you set it internally and it's locked, then they can't do anything unless they get inside the transmitter. So this is where the signal is generated that creates your radio frequency. Then over here, you can see this is where the audio limiting and audio processing happens. Um, mostly the limiting is the most important thing with the brick wall limiter stopping the over deviating of the signal. Now there are two different settings here. You can see with these jumpers where you can change the type of limiting that you're running, whether it's a hard processing type limiting to give you a louder sound or just basically controlling it so that you don't over deviate. You can also remove these, but then you run the danger of over deviating and having a signal which is illegal. So you do want to have the brick wall limiter, which is you can select one of these two, but importantly, you can choose a sound that is very easy on the ear and then you can also choose a sound which is much louder. But when you run the louder setting, there is the chance of a bit more distortion. So it's not as clean, but if you want a really loud radio station, you have that built in as well. This will all be bypassed if you use an Orban Optimod or any of the other audio processors when this entire audio section will be bypassed and the multiplex signal will be put directly into the transmitter. There's a connector on the back which you can plug in the multiplex signal instead of your left and right audio. And then looking over here, this is where there is an onboard amplifier. This you could call a pre-amplifier. Here it can generate, the, the board itself can generate, and the board can stand alone on its own as a one watt transmitter. And this transistor here is generating that, uh, or amplifying it to that one watt. So the signal is created here, modulated over here, then pre-amplified over here. Then the signal moves to the amplifier board. This is the RF amplifier board, not audio amplifying, but RF. This is where your radio signal goes up from one watt to five watts. And this board, of course, can be changed to a much bigger amplifier. You can have a 25 watt, 50 watt, 100 watt. But the main thing is that you need to have power coming from your board to at least your exciter board to your amplifier board. And then the amplifier board puts out the major power. That amount of power is controlled by 
this control panel. Now looking at the control panel, this is the inside of it that you can see there is the main processing chip. That chip will basically be telling the amplifier how much power to be putting out and uh, because you uh, don't want to be stuck with a fixed one watt if you want to for example run two watts if you're losing some of your power through your cable and you need more than one watt you can adjust that up all the way up to five watts but uh, without the control of the amplifier board you're stuck to a fixed one watt but with the interaction between the exciter board the amplifier board and the controller circuit you can adjust anywhere from zero that's zero watts to basically off um, or in this case it's probably somewhere around five or ten milliwatts but from there all the way up to five watts signal and on the other side you will see the screen here you can see the front side of the transmitter where there are buttons that you can use to control and also to monitor. So you can select the frequency that you want, the power output, as well as be able to see what the modulation is like and uh, give you a display of what your frequency is at the moment. There are also indicator lights here which basically show that the transmitter is on and also if there are any problems. In this transmitter there is also a protection circuit built in which means that if there is something wrong with the antenna the transmitter will switch to low power to reduce the danger of damaging the amplifier or the transmitter overall. So there are indicators there but the transmitter will in this case look after itself as well. The two connectors in front here are really just for monitoring. They don't do anything to the actual signal. They just allow you to monitor um, the RF as well as the modulation of the transmitter. Having a quick look at the back, you can see there's your left and right audio input. If you've got balanced audio, you can plug from your mixing desk or from your radio link, your left and right audio. As you can see here, there's a multiplex signal here you can either run the multiplex in and out or you can run it in directly from your um, audio processor your Orban OptiMod you can run the multiplex in there um, and you can also get a multiplex out from the audio that you're putting in if you're putting in a stereo left and right. There are some control cables uh, connectors here as well that you can use uh, that is for a lot more advanced features on the transmitter. Then you've got your RF out this is where the actual radio signal will come out where you'll connect your cable and that cable will run all the way up to the antenna and on the right you've just got a connector for your kettle cord which powers up your power supply. So that's your complete inside look of an FM transmitter with the power supply, the main exciter board which has all the controls built in and as well as the amplifier board and then the controller circuit which allows you to adjust things like the signal power and the frequency as, uh, as well as be able to monitor what's happening.